Hi and welcome to Faith in Front. Today we want to talk about a topic. It's it's not a new topic. Uh, sometimes you think some things will kind of maybe fade off, but then when I when I thought about it, I'm like, well, no, this particular topic is uh, too much money being made. So what we're talking about today is the prosperity gospel. Check this out. <laughs> The luxury lifestyle of the following prosperity preachers is beyond anything you can imagine. T.D. Jakes lives in a $5.5 million mansion in Fort Worth, Texas. You drive a wonderful car and you have a plane. How do you explain that? Joel Osteen lives in a $10.5 million mansion in Houston, Texas. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a nice place to live. When your wealth is gained off of distorting the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's a lot wrong with that. And Joel Osteen does not apologize for his wealth. Do you make any apologies for your grand piano? I really don't, Oprah. We just feel like this is God's blessings. Stephen Furtick lives in a 16,000 square foot mansion in Reddington, North Carolina. Elevation Church Pastor Stephen Furtick is building a 16,000 square foot home in Weddington. Creflo Dollar lives in a $3.5 million mansion. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop but when your wealth is gained off of preying upon the hopes and fears of hurting and sick and desperate people, there's a lot wrong with that. I think if you need to sow a seed right now, this anointing is present. Jesse Duplantis lives in a 35,000 square foot mansion. Jesse Duplantis, for example, lives in a 35,000 square foot parsonage. Kenneth Copeland lives in a $7 million mansion and owns multiple private jets. Tyler's one of the greatest guys. He made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it. The slavish lifestyle those prosperity preachers live is built upon the backs of poor and desperate people from their mega churches and all around the world by promising them wealth and prosperity if they give to their ministries. God wants to bless you and the way you step through that door is the sowing of seeds, spiritually, physically, financially. But it's all a lie. Prosperity gospel has no interest in the biblical gospel. It only offers financial prosperity, physical well-being to desperate, desperate people. So when we talk about the prosperity doctrine, when you go back to uh, before Martin Luther, um, you had the Catholic Church, you had priests selling indulgences. You know, do you want to get your mother out of purgatory? You know, give. Uh, <laughs> and thankfully, Martin Luther saw this and he was like, wait a minute, salvation is free. It's through it's through grace. It's undeserved, undeserved favor. Why are we selling? In the, why are we selling? Why are we um, making people pay for a blessing? Right. Sound familiar? And this is you know, hundreds of years ago. Right. But some things, you know, they 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 stay on point. And so I'm kind of reminded of that when I think about uh, the prosperity gospel. Um, two major problems that I see with it is that the first problem is that there's just too much manipulation uh, involved, um, spiritual manipulation. And then two, um, I think that it teaches a warped view of giving because it, it teaches people to give to get. Uh, and the unfortunate thing is, is that when you're constantly talking about all the wealth that God is going to give you, unfortunately, you win people to the blessings of God instead of God. Uh, when you look back at what the apostles are really doing, when Jesus said, go and make disciples, there wasn't a lot of money being talked about, but they were they were talking about repentance. You, you need to realize you're messed up. Right. And that we have this sinful nature and we need to be reconciled to God. We need to repent. That was the, the, the major point being made. OK. And so let's look at a couple of scriptures because um, we just want to contrast um, some scriptures to, to what we saw in the clip. Uh, and the first one we want to look at is found in Luke, uh, Luke 12 and in specifically Luke twelve fifteen, And he said, and it says, then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in a abundance of possessions. And that's key. That last part. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And let's face it, a lot of prosperity 
uh, pastors, if we're going to be honest, that's what they're preaching is that you're supposed to have a lot. And all you have to do is sow a seed. Right. And that's the name of the game. Sow a seed. Let's look at another passage found in Mark. And it's, and it's in Mark 10, and it's basically about the, the rich young ruler, right? The rich young ruler comes up, and he, he wants to know, you know, uh, what must I do to in, in, inherit eternal life, right? And so Jesus has this conversation. And then when you come down to verse 21 of Mark 10, because he, the young boy says, I've done this, I've done that. And he says, and Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Now, let me let me let me clarify on this. There's nothing wrong with wealth. You don't have to be poor, broke down and busted to prove to people that you love Jesus. Right. Because sometimes we can go to opposite extreme. We can we can think that. You know, oh, I have to be humble and have nothing to look spiritual. No, <laughs> that's almost equally as bad as thinking you're supposed to have a lot. OK, he asked the young man to sell everything because he knew that that's what had the young man's heart. And whenever you follow Christ, he's going to he's going to come to you and say you need to give up whatever you've put before him because that's idolatry. And so whatever it is that you're putting before him, that's what he's going to say. Give up. So this is not teaching that there is something wrong with wealth. OK, but if the wealth has you, which it appears to, um, to be the case with a lot of prosperity pastors, is that the wealth has them. Uh, that's when we have a problem. When we look at First Timothy six, we can start at First Timothy Six six and it says, but godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. It also says, those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap, and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Now, just once again, um, it says the love of money. OK, money's not evil. But if you have greed, yes, that's the problem. When it talks about godliness with contentment is great gain. So we see here that. Jesus was pushing to be content with what you have. OK, but it says godliness. OK, if you don't have any godliness, contentment is going to be difficult. And so he's saying that godliness with contentment is great gain. But then when you look at um, verse nine, when it says that those who want to get rich, they fall into all types of traps and and fall into many foolish and harmful desires that that plunge you into destruction. You know, a lot of people don't really realize that, you know, sometimes God is not going to give you a lot of money because he knows all of the foolish desires that that's in us. And sometimes when he may bless you in a certain way, it can uncap all kinds of foolishness and harmful desires that you didn't even know was that was in you. God knows what's in us. That's why. Uh, I don't believe everyone can have wealth, okay, because of what he just says here. You'll be pierced. They'll pierce themselves into with many griefs, okay? So when we talk about the prosperity uh, gospel, it's, we, we see something contrary here in the word. You know, it's out of balance. Like I said before, it's nothing wrong with wealth. It's nothing wrong with asking God uh, for wants and uh and needs because he's a good father. You know, a good father enjoys giving us what we need. He enjoys giving us what we want. But are we willing to say, Lord, nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours be done? See, the prosperity doctrine or gospel, you know, it's teaching people that if they sow a seed, well, I believe in giving. I believe in tithing. I believe in, uh, uh, in giving offering. We believe in that. Okay. Because the church does need resources to run, but it does become questionable of 
if a private jet is needed. Okay, you know, and I and I'll go so far to say it, it, I don't want to say there's nothing. It's not wrong to have a private jet, but if you got it through manipulation, okay, if you got it through manipulation, the manipulation of the saints, that's really what I'm trying to point to. Not so much the wealth itself. It's how did you get it? Because we don't want to think that every big church that has resources and has wealth, we don't want to put them in a negative light. The question really arises, how did you get the wealth? Did you get it in a way that was pleasing to the Lord? Are you using the finances uh, that you've been blessed with to, to really pour back into the into the kingdom? Is that what's going on? I can remember I had to um, cover Juanita Bynum. Now, I remember the first video I saw of her, and when I say cover her, I, a church hired me to 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 videotape her 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 um, presentation. Um, when I first saw her some years ago, she did the no more sheets thing, and it was it was pretty solid. I was like, man, it said a lot. It just seemed like with time, it, it, things shifted, and so I'm on camera and I'm 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 covering her her presentation. She's she's speaking. And, you know, now she's prophetess Juanita Bynum. She wasn't that thin, but she's prophetess Juanita Bynum. And I noticed that there was a $25 line, a $50 line, a $100 line. And, you know, the people that was in the $100 line, they were really serious about their blessing. Okay. <laughs> and she was like, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. Almost like the window was going to close, you know, before, you know, so you need to get up there and get that money to her really quick. I'm sorry. I was, I was like, wow, that was some serious manipulation right there. Like the, like the window's going to close. If you don't get up here and put that money in my hand right now. Really? Okay. That's, that's amazing. And what was amazing is the people they were running up there. And that's unfortunate because if you have people who are young in the faith, and you mislead them like that, you know, that's that's unfortunate. And God is going to hold people accountable that um, manipulate and mislead people you know, about who he is, because that's not God. God is not. That's not God. Come up, come up. Give it. Give, give the money really quick. If you need, you know, if you need this, send this exact amount in. That's not God. So I'll close with this last this last scripture because I, I believe that it it's really balanced it's one of my favorite scriptures and it's found in proverbs okay and it's proverbs um chapter 30 verse 8 through 9 and it says keep falsehood and lies far from me give me neither poverty nor riches but give me only my daily bread otherwise i may have too much and disown you and say who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and still and so still and so dishonor the name of my God. And that's just a that's just a it's just a balance. You know, the the the, the person is saying, I'm not saying I want to be broke, busted and disgusted. But give me what I need. OK. All right. He's saying, you know. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Just 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 give me my daily bread. Give me what's needed in order for my relationship with you, Lord, to stay right. That's what he's saying. And that's my prayer. It's nothing wrong with wanting things. But are you willing to say, but Lord, if this interferes with my relationship with you or my family, I don't want it. Or are you willing to say that? And that's what we have to keep in mind. So I hope this has been encouraging. Please like and subscribe if if it has. And, and the whole thing was really not to come at those who do the prosperity, but you, but we have to encourage one another to see God the right way. And I don't think the prosperity gospel gives the right view of God. So as usual, keep your faith in front.